Hi, I'm Jess, and this is Intro to Adulthood. Today, we're going to be talking about how you need to learn how to trust your body. Because I have a chronic illness, and it took me six years to be able to get a diagnosis. And in those six years, I was told many times by a few different doctors um, that there was nothing wrong with me, um, that I was making it up, um, like to get out of school or that, you know, the pain wasn't as severe as I was saying it was. Then I was finally diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which is a chronic pain and fatigue disorder, which if you don't know what it is, um, it's that the nerve endings in my body um, send off pain signals, um, like I have a bruise or like, you know, somebody's like punched me or something. Um, but it, nothing's happened, so my body's in pain even though nothing's happening. Um, there's no reason for the pain to be triggered. Um, and I have chronic fatigue, which makes me extremely tired, which kind of makes sense. If you're in pain all the time, then you're probably going to be tired. Um, for a really, really long time, uh, I missed a lot of school and I didn't know what to do um, because every professional that I went to didn't believe me um, and partially I think because I'm a girl partially because I was 16 17 um, and people just made assumptions um, as people do and doctors are people uh, so if a doctor tells you that nothing's wrong and you think that there's something wrong trust your body because the doctor doesn't live inside of your body every single day like you do and nobody gets to experience the symptoms and the feelings that you are under because of your illnesses. Um, you know, doctors are there to help us try and figure out from the symptoms what is the diagnosis. Uh, and for me, it took a really, really long time because I had multiple things going on. Along with my fibromyalgia, I can't have dairy or wheat or nuts. So I can't digest very well and my body's always in pain. <laughs> which seems like it's a lot and it, it seems like it would really get me down which it does some days but you know you learn to live with whatever cards you're dealt um, and I know how to manage a lot of my pain and a lot of my stressors now to be able to make sure that my stress doesn't trigger my fibromyalgia my food allergies affect my fibromyalgia because when my stomach is acting up and inflamed then the rest of my body takes that as a cue to also become inflamed so for me managing both my eating and my stress is how i manage my fibromyalgia the best because a lot of my pain ends up stemming from stress um i've been told a lot of times to take antidepressants because it's supposed to help, you know, numb out some of the hormone and emotional fluctuations that happen um, and give me a more consistent dose um, of, I think, serotonin levels. Um, so for me, antidepressants don't help. They would never help because I'm not trying to treat my mental stress. I'm trying to treat my physical symptoms. I can learn how to handle my stress through therapy and through being able to meditate and spend time in nature and play games and vent out, you know, my feelings to friends. But I personally choose not to take antidepressants because for me, my problem that I want to deal with was my physical pain and when you're being told for a really long time that 
you're not in pain and there's nothing going on and you're crazy, it can make you feel crazy. It can make you doubt yourself and doubt that there is anything wrong. Um, don't give in to the temptation to believe that you're just normal and there's nothing wrong because again you live inside of your body and nobody else does and if you think something is wrong then it's probably wrong so keep on searching and keep on fighting and find a doctor that will help you find the root cause of your symptoms and not just try and treat your symptoms with other sort of pills if you need to take pills to be able to help you through then go ahead and take them but don't be persuaded by others to do something that you don't feel comfortable with and don't be persuaded by doctors to believe that you have nothing wrong when you know that something's wrong I had to struggle with this for I think six years um, until I finally got a diagnosis and a diagnosis is such a weight off of your shoulders it makes you feel like your version of normal like you do have a reason to feel the pain and the aches and the the negatives that your body gives you you are you know valid in feeling what you feel and once you have a validity in your symptoms, then you're able to actually start taking steps to figure out how you can manage those symptoms. When you have more clarity into what your diagnosis entails, then you can start to really take steps to figure out how to live your best life while you have the symptoms that you will probably have for the rest of your life. So, Take it one step at a time, and when a doctor tells you that nothing's wrong, don't be discouraged. Because just because the thing that they were searching for isn't the thing that you have, it doesn't mean that you don't have something. If you like this video, then please scroll through my other stuff. I'm sure you'll find something that piques your interest. And if you like me, then follow me on my Instagram or my Facebook page. Or if you're on Facebook or Instagram, follow me on YouTube. I'll put all of my links below in the description. Thanks for watching. And until next time, just keep on living. Um, all right.